everyone. Uh, I still fight with my mom that why you named me Srish because I face this quite often that people are not able to pronounce my name correctly. Uh, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, so this is one of the toughest sessions uh, probably that you're gonna uh, have to face uh, post lunch and I hope I'll not bore you with my presentation and I knew that my session is right after the lunch so I kept my presentation slightly humorous and hopefully the, I'll tell you a small story also which probably will help you in waking up. Uh, okay, so I, uh, you know, usually occasionally attend such sessions so that I can make my dad proud of me. Uh, the reason is, you know, I come from a Marwadi Baniya family. Anyone in this room uh, is a Marwadi Baniya? Oh, there are quite few hands, so you, you will hopefully relate to it. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, when you're born in a Marwadi Baniya family, it has its own pros and cons. Okay, the biggest pro is that they don't expect you to excel in your academics. You know, they don't expect you to become an engineer or a doctor. Okay, so you can have a chill life, but the con is that your fate is sealed, you know. So you, everyone knows in your family that once the guy is gonna graduate, he's gonna join family business, okay. So my dad had similar expectations from me. me. So unfortunately, I disappointed him and I decided to take a different path. And obviously he was not happy about it. So for the couple of years, he never spoke to me also. I mean, he was not happy about it. But one fine day I was sitting with him, so he's based out of Jaipur, I belong to Jaipur. I was sitting with him and by chance there was a, uh, we both were watching something on the television. So then he made an attempt to start the conversation. So finally he asked me that, Acha, tell me what do you do? And there was an ad playing. I thought, uh, Sirish, this is your time to, you know, be cool, show off. I said, Dad, you see this ad, I make ads. So he said, okay, but I've never seen you in any ad. I said, Papa, I don't act. He said, okay, so you write. I said, no, Papa, I don't write. I said, so you direct? I said, no, Papa, I don't direct. So the conversation ended there, and I realized that he still has the, had the similar impression about me that this guy is useless. <laughs> he still tried one more attempt. He said, Acha, tell me how much do you earn? When I said, Papa, this is how much I earn, then so it was sealed that this guy is a failure in his life. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, now imagine this was back in 2006 when we had, what, roughly 20, 21 million internet users in India. Imagine if I have to have the similar kind of conversation with my dad now, that what do you do? Imagine me explaining him what is DMP, what is CDP, what is DSP, what is programmatic. I mean, I mean, I will fail probably, and I will embarrass him even more. But fortunately enough, now I think he is somewhat proud of me, uh, and we conversate more often these days. Uh, so starting from there, uh, can, I, can I have the ticker, or can we move to the next slide? Okay, so what, what are we looking at? Uh, you know, market dynamics were always changing, consumer preferences were always changing, consumer touch points were always evolving. However, what this pandemic has done, it has just accelerated this whole process of change and evolution, right? So what we are looking at, okay, okay, sorry, thank you. Okay, so in 2000, Microsoft conducted research to measure how long people can focus on one thing for a specific amount of time. The results showed that an average uh, consumer's attention span was 12 seconds. This was in 2000. 15 years later, it dropped to 8 seconds. You know, goldfish has an attention span of 9 seconds. So goldfish actually beats us in terms of attention span. And why this is happening? Uh, you know, there is so much information available, so much demands for our attention that we can hardly focus on a particular trend for a short time. Oracle ID graph shows that an average consumer owns five devices in today's time. Now imagine the kind of information that they are exposed to, okay? Uh, and on an average, we scroll through a content which is equivalent to the length of Statue of Liberty. An average consumer scroll through 300 feet of content on a daily basis on their mobile phones, okay? And the challenge is the more information that you're exposed to, it creates paradox of choices. You know, you're not able to decide what you want. It creates more confusion. That's the kind of scenario that we are going through. Now that leaves us marketer in one of the biggest dilemma that what should we propose to our consumers? Where should we go and reach out to them? How should we reach out to them? Now that's one of the biggest challenges of today's marketers because there are so many options available. Uh, we have got, I think more than 8,000 channels in India, 10,000 plus uh, uh, newspapers in India. There are 400 plus radio channels uh, in India. So the challenge is immense for marketers today to ensure that you deliver right message to your consumers right time. 
So what are we trying to do at Panasonic? I will briefly touch upon these parts that, you know, how the consumer journey is evolving in today's time. Uh, how is it ch changing the funnel for other marketers? You know, how are we mapping our efforts vis-a-vis -vis our new age consumers? And how are we tapping the different uh, touch points? Okay, so if you look at the, uh, you know, consumer journey, the consumer journey has evolved you know, over the years. Earlier, it was actually very linear. You know, there was a fluid funnel, okay, narrow marketing path. Uh, there was an initial consideration stage. Then consumer used to walk up to a store for validation, for consideration. Then the purchase of moment used to happen at the store. And then you come back and installation happens. And that's where the brand interaction with the consumer ends. But in today's time, it's extremely, extremely uh, non-linear. It's fluid. The funnel is extremely fluid. Okay. Consumers are interacting with multiple touch points and the moment of truth can happen at any point. Okay. So if a need arises today, the first and foremost thing I do is probably I go to YouTube, I go to Amazon, I go to Flipkart, I start checking reviews, ratings, I look at review videos on YouTube. I go to a store to validate, but at the store level also I open something to validate the spiel that a sales guy is offering to me. You know, so digital is playing an extremely important role in the journey today. Uh, so earlier, the funnel was straight. The funnel were extremely fixed. Uh, depending on whether it's awareness stage, whether you want to target the consideration or you target the purchase stage, I mean, you used to choose the platforms and you used to deliver a message according to that. But in today's time, what is happening is that since consumers are exposed to so much of information across different touch points, now brands are trying to weep into the actual journey of a consumer that they go through on a daily basis. Okay? Uh, and digital plays an extremely important role in any consumer action because any digital recommendation, any digital research can change the decision of a consumer. And I'll uh, show you certain data points. This was the research done by Boston Consulting Group and Google. And this is specific to consumer durables. The research says that if you are an in-store buyer, only 16% of the consumers stick to their original choice of brand. And 84% of, the, uh, percent of consumers actually change their preference post doing the research on digital platform. That's the power of digital in today's time. And it's not just applicable to in-store buyers. Even if you look at consumers who end up buying online, only 26% of the consumers stick to their original choice of brand. But over the course of research, they changed. So 74% of the consumers actually changed their brand that they were looking for or they started their search with. Now that's the power of digital uh, that we're looking at. The same research also says that when it comes to consumer durable, roughly 65% of the consumers spend two to three weeks of their time on digital platform before making up their mind. You know, that's the amount of time. So the discovery is happening on digital, the search is happening on digital, the research is happening on digital. And I'm sure you all will relate to it. Earlier, when we used to walk into the store, we used to walk in with a completely blank slate. You know, and we used to make our purchases, our decision basis the spiel that a sales guy used to deliver at the retail store. Right? Now, today when I'm walking into a store, I'm walking well prepared, I'm probably walking with shortlisted two or three brands and I'm going with a specific set of questions. Because rest of the research is already done by the consumer on a digital platform. I mean, that's how we are evolving. And that's when it's becoming extremely important for brands to ensure that they seed in relevant content at different platforms which can actually help consumers take an informed decision. I mean, that's the intent with which we are driving any of our marketing initiatives. Okay? Now, for us, uh, it's not just the, the platform, it's the audience and context that plays a key role in our marketing mix. What I mean by that is, when we look at our customers, we divide them into different buckets. And it's extremely important for brands who are probably not the leaders, probably a challenger brand, because you will always have a catch-22 situation. You will always be running short of budgets. Okay, so you have to make certain smart choices. Uh, so what we do, we, we ensure that the most important consumers for us are the intent audience. What do you mean by intent audience? The audience who's already there in the market looking to buy a product. And I'm not saying only for our brand, suppose any consumer who's looking to buy an air conditioner becomes my intent audience. And then our all marketing actions are designed looking at how we can tap them dif across different touch points that they're exploring while making up their mind. And then there's a captive audience, the audience who is actually uh, committed to watch any content, okay? Uh, they cannot skip uh, uh, a particular piece of content. Third is the exposed audience. Uh, from a brand standpoint, we are always looking at retargeting the consumer whom we actually want to retarget depending on their past, uh, you know, behavior. And then fourth, most important is the brand loyalist. Uh, the consumers who are already owning any set of our products are one of the most important in our funnel. And the platforms that we look at, 
uh, while uh, you know approaching each of these uh, set of audiences is so for example if i'm looking at an intent based audience search engine is extremely extremely critical because that's like an highly intent based audience who is coming and looking out for a particular product so anyone searching for air conditioners we ensure that we end up serving them a relevant information that they are looking for uh, display campaigns become extremely important and when you target with dsp i mean it it provides you optimal uh, you know roi in terms of the investment that you are doing uh, we also look at uh, doing a lot of influencer marketing so that you know a consumer who is looking for any kind of product or service can actually validate uh, their decision depending on the person who can have an influencing power uh, for them we see a lot of articles and prs which again with an intent that the idea is not to sell but to serve our consumers or help them solve their pain points uh, and we leverage key moments you know so any special topical event that is coming depending on the seasonality depending on festivities or any big sales event that are coming across ecom platform is something that we try to leverage that particular point captive audience primarily from an awareness point of view so any anything related to ott like i said these are the audience who are committed uh, to watch any piece of uh, content uh, social media plays an extremely important role in today's time to continue your engagement with your set of audience and obviously youtube non skippable ads uh, when it comes to expose audience yes influencer marketing again works well uh, for this set of audience because they have already experienced your brand uh, now is the time for them to validate their decision uh, exclusive offers because we assume they are probably in the last stage of their uh, you know journey which is primarily a purchase stage and any kind of offer uh, a customized offer can trigger that purchase moment for them uh, cta driven content uh, dsp again plays an extremely important role here so we work uh, closely with amazon and flipkart to ensure that we are reaching out to a relevant audience who is looking for a particular product and service at that given point in time uh, when it comes to brand loyalist uh, the whole intent is to ensure that there is a continuous engagement happening with consumers post purchase also uh, like i mentioned 10 years back your interaction with the consumer completely ends once the product installed in his or her house but it's extremely important in today's time to, that you keep the engagement going on so one of the ways for example if someone bought a microwave oven you know we ensure that we send out them uh, send them emailers or messages of any new recipe so that you know uh, they can uh, probably take the best uh, uh, usage of that particular product when it for example anything related to air conditioner not every consumer is well versed with all the features that you have to offer so we ensure that we continue that uh, you know education for consumers in terms of you know, how our product can make their life more simple more comfortable so the whole intent is to don't stop your communication right after the purchase but enhance that experience of the consumer and of of course we need to work on after sale service i mean that's one of the biggest uh, you know priorities for any consumer driven brand because nothing beats your own experience of a particular brand if i bought a brand and if i have had a bad experience there is no way i'm going to consider that brand again so service plays an extremely important role as far as consumer driven industry is concerned so i think i was given 15 minutes slot uh, so i'm done with my presentation lastly i would say while we all are maintaining social distancing but as a brand managers i think our role is to ensure that we are present on the platforms where consumers are and it's not just about being present need to understand the journey of a consumer and deliver a customized messaging depending on what a consumer is looking for i think it's high time that the role of a marketer is not to sell but the role of a marketer is to serve their consumers is to solve their pain points i think the way we will shift our approach is when the brand the consumers will also start appreciating that brand so that's the intent with which we are working and hopefully uh, you will see us being more visible on digital platform so thank you